Southern Honeyway Valley. Like all the surrounding Finger Lakes, this basin was carved out by advancing glacial ice, leaving a U-shaped valley. Glacial deposits dammed the basin, while melting ice filled it with water, creating what is now Honeyway Lake. The wetland complex south of the lake is rich in diversity, supporting many distinct species of wetland plants, nesting songbirds and waterfowl, breeding amphibians and reptiles, and some unique wetland mammals. Like me. Just kidding. This video highlights the resident beaver population located in the Southern Honeyway Valley Wetland Complex, which in my opinion is one of the coolest things we get to witness regularly here at the field station. Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. I work at Finger Lakes Community College's Mueller Field Station. It's a biological research station just south of Honeyway Lake. And we have this really special resource available to us, which is the inlet that flows into the lake. And we're out here today because there's a lot of beavers that live here. And we're just kind of exploring the habitat. And in the spring, we had found this old lodge over here and had placed a trail camera on it. Trail cameras are a way of observing wildlife very passively, observing a little bit of animal behavior and interaction and just getting some really, really cool pictures. So we had had it on an old lodge just to see what was going on here. And when we came back to retrieve it, it's now October. We actually found a new lodge right behind me here. And so we're moving the camera so that hopefully we can get some really great um, video, actually video footage of the beavers and just see what they're up to. We place the camera pointing towards what looks like a new beaver lodge. It's often difficult to find an appropriate object to attach the camera to while maintaining a good field of view. We are hoping this stump gives a good vantage point as we can see fresh vegetation here, indicating recent activity. During the early 20th century, beaver were extirpated from much of its natural range. And this was due to habitat loss, as well as a high demand for its fur, which is also called a pelt, which we have right here. You can see it's really nice and thick and soft. But they're now thriving actually in much of their historical range. And this is due to reforestation efforts, harvesting limits, as well as reintroductions into their natural range. Beavers are considered a keystone species. This is something that species depend on and their disappearance drastically alters the ecological community. They constantly modify the landscape by building dams and lodges, which in turn helps to create ponds or increase wetland habitat for many other species. This act of damming can also help protect areas from drought, help slow down and filter sediments and pollutants from moving water, and even help protect ecosystems from the effect of climate change by storing carbon and cooling the ambient temperature of surrounding areas. Organisms that drastically modify the landscape are called ecosystem engineers. Beavers eat the cambium, which is the inner living layer of the bark. So you can see here we've got a beaver stick, which they have stripped all the outer bark off in order to get to that really important food source. In the summertime, they may eat things that are more herbaceous material like leaves or roots or cattails. Beavers will fell an entire tree to get to the new growth at the top of the tree. One beaver will chew down a tree, but the rest of the family will help break the tree down into logs that they will then use as building material. Their favorite foods are aspen, willow, alder, and maples, just to name a few. And beavers have these nice, long, strong front teeth they will continually grow throughout the lifetime of the beaver and gnawing this woody material helps to keep them at a decent size. Otherwise they could grow out of control and form something called a malinclusion, which would then actually be really damaging to the beaver's health. Beaver lodges may become abandoned over time. We often find that other animals use these structures as shelter, feeding platforms, or scent posts. Here at the field station, it is not uncommon to find river otter scat on top of or near old beaver lodges. These areas are called latrine sites, areas where an animal may repeatedly defecate for the purpose of, you guessed it, communicating with one another. 
They will also use the old lodges for denning. Although beavers and river otters occupy the same habitat, they live together in harmony and do not compete for food resources. River otter eat mostly fish and may actually benefit from beaver dams landlocking prey into a confined area. So here we've come across this absolutely beautiful beaver dam and the beaver's lodge is going to be on the other side of it, the side where the water is a little bit higher. So the reason why they create these dams is because they're trying to raise the water level, of course, but because number one, they don't want to be out of the water searching for food. So they want as much of the land around them covered in water as possible so that they can stay in the water while they go retrieve sticks for building and also for food. And then another reason why they're trying to increase the water depth is because they want the underwater entrance to their lodge to stay open water in the winter time. So when the water column freezes, they need enough depth that that's not gonna freeze all the way through, keeping them either frozen inside or out of their lodge, which would be very bad for the beaver. Beaver dams can be built remarkably fast, sometimes in less than 24 hours, and beavers typically tend to work on them at nighttime when they're less vulnerable to predators. The world's largest dam was recorded in Alberta, Canada at Wood Buffalo National Park. It is 2,788 feet long, which is twice the length of the Hoover Dam. As beavers prepare for winter, they must repair their dam with fresh sticks, mud, and rocks, and reinforce their lodge. They also store branches near their lodge for easy access by sticking them in the mud. This is called a cache, and they will utilize this food source throughout the winter months until they can safely forage on land again in the spring. Beavers mate in late winter. They will live in small family groups depending on the availability of suitable habitat. The offspring will typically stay with their parents through the first year, and then sometimes even a second year if they can't find suitable habitat and establish their own territory based on population density in their area. The lodge will consist of typically two underwater entrances, multiple dens, and a hole at the top for fresh air. Activity will typically center around the lodge and then radiate outward where they're collecting building material and feeding material. We found this deposit on top of the beaver dam. Beavers often defecate in the water and their scats rarely found on land. It's typically composed mostly of sawdust. So although this might not be beaver scat, other possibilities include a loose scat from a muskrat or an anal secretion from a fissure. We're really not sure, although it's no surprise that other animals use this dam as a little highway to cross from one side of the channel to the other. In addition to dams and lodges, beavers also create little structures known as scent mounds, and they will go to the bottom of the water and they will bring up a conglomerate of leaves and mud and form it into a little pyramid shape. They will then deposit a oily substance called castorium, this is produced in caster sacks that are located underneath the base of their tail, and they will deposit this onto the scent mound. Now, castoreum has been historically used for lots of human uses, such as artificial vanilla flavoring and makeup and all sorts of different things. We have a little jar of it that we use to um, scent our trail cameras, and it's used as a scent lure to just make other animals a little curious and get better pictures of them. Beavers create scent mounds as a form of communication, so they might be trying to relate information such as their age or breeding status or defining a territory. They also use castoreum to waterproof their fur. So we have returned to gather our camera that we left out here and it's been many months. Things look a lot different here. I'm not quite sure what kind of activity has taken place, but we're going to grab this camera and we will take it back to the classroom and find out. So I'm just going to take this down and we'll go through the data and see what's on there.
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find some content on our Instagram and our Facebook page, which is FLCC Mueller Field Station. And we hope to see you at the field station someday.